Hello, and thanks for checking out this video from Placing Culture, which along with various other tutorials is also located at placingculture.blogspot.com. My name is David Meek, and I'm currently a doctoral candidate in the Anthropology Department at the University of Georgia. Through this blog, I try to provide some insights into how evolving cartographic technologies and methods are increasingly mediating our understanding of the myriad interrelations between culture and place. So in this screencast, we're going to continue learning about how to create the time series animation in ArcGIS. So in this screencast, we'll cover step two, which is the creation of the time series animation. Uh, in step one, uh, the previous screencast, we looked at the steps necessary to format our data. So if you haven't checked out that screencast, please do so. You'll learn how to transpose the date field, which is necessary in order to create a time series animation. And you'll learn about other uh, data formatting that's necessary in order to be able to correctly uh, run the time series animation in ArcGIS. So we're going to start off by uh, activating the animation toolbar, which you'll find under your tools menu. And once you've got the animation toolbar activated, uh, you can open it up and you'll see that there are various options under it. So for today, we're going to start out with a creating a time layer animation. Okay, so that's the fourth one down. So we are going to open that up and click that. And then we're going to uh, select a layer that contains the time uh, field. And in our case, uh, that's the time series three. We've selected that. Now we're going to pick the start time, which uh, in our case is number. So as a reminder, the time field can be a variety of formats, including uh, general, number, uh, date. And you can get more information on formatting that field uh, from ArcGIS's uh, help page on Time Series Animation, which I've linked on the Placing Culture blog site. Um, and you might just want to play around with these fields to see what works for you. I frequently find that this is the most difficult part of creating a Time Series Animation, is uh, having the date field formatted correctly. So don't be frustrated if it doesn't work at first, just play around with it. And uh, the time unit we're going to set as unknown and the time interval is 10 because it's 10 years. So I choose to use uh, the time field as unknown because it's essentially like a wild card. You would use unknown if your uh, time field is formatted in, say, general or number, and you would probably uh, change the time field uh, to a certain uh, day, day, month, month, year, year sort of time format if your time field is formatted as a date. As a last recommendation with this, unknown is basically a good time category to try to put in if when you're uh, running the animation, you're getting kind of weird results, i.e. weird numbers, or it's showing it to you in a format that you don't like. If you put it in unknown, uh, you might have better luck. And we're going to type in year, colon, so that we see year when it displays when we run the video. And there are some... Uh, some animation controls that we're going to open up and you can see the universal play pause stop and record we're going to play it and in the window you can see what the animation is going to look like and you know it looks all right for the time being so we're going to leave it like that down here at the bottom you can see uh, the percentage i.e how long it's going to run for and say we want to have it longer where well, we go to the animation controls it can change the number of seconds that the animation runs for. So let's export it. Let's see what it looks like. So we can export it as an AVI file. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Give it a new name and export. Now on my system, whenever I uh, press a specific codec to export it with, it crashes. So I always export it uh, fully uncompressed. So it'll run for a while and after a while you'll see the video. So as you can see, it's basically doing a screen capture of whatever's at the bottom, which means that we want to make sure that when we're exporting the video, we don't do anything in terms of uh, shifting between windows or, or anything like that. Now there are some other problems uh, with the video that was exported, and we're going to see if we can address them. One is the position of the map. 
So we come back into ArcGIS and uh, we can shift in the display window what the map looks like in terms of its, uh, its scale. And that, I think, is going to help us in terms of positioning the text. Another thing we can do is change the, uh, the font size. Uh, we're going to change it from 10 to 20, and we're going to bold it. So with the bolded, we press play again, and we see that it looks much better, both in terms of the position and the, the font size. Well, that's all for now. Thanks a lot for watching Step 2 of Creative Time Series Animation. In later videos, we'll revisit the time series exploring advanced techniques for doing group animations. So this has been David Meek. You can contact me at dmeek at uga.edu or you can visit Placing Culture at placingculture.blogspot.com for more videos. Thanks again.